So prior to discussing Smart Apply, I must discuss how Smart Apply came to be. Previously in hard ops, there was a feature called C Sharp, and C Sharp's job was to mainly apply Booleans and solidify. And if we press Q, you can actually see that Sharpen is the control option of Sharpen. So if you just control click Sharpen, you can basically just apply Booleans very quickly. So let's say I had this Boolean set up and I have it adjusted and I've beveled it and I got it exactly where I want and I would like to apply this and keep working. But I also want to mark all the edges. Well, that is where you know C Sharp would come in and it would actually apply the Boolean and mark the edges correctly so that way you can kind of override the rules and limitations of AutoSmooth, which now we're working in a primarily AutoSmooth angle-based workflow. But you can see that you know, sometimes you want to actually apply things and actually keep working. Like for example, if I wanted to start moving the shape around or um, begin making more uh, integral modifications to this area, I can't until I apply it. So for that reason, you can just control click uh, sharpen in order to C sharp and that will allow you to kind of just keep working. For example, now I'm free to basically cut an X in this area that I can then use to turn into a circle and then begin extruding, you know, suck it inwards, rotate it a little bit, you know, start working on that angled circle I'm always talking about. But that in a nutshell is why sharpen exists. In fact, I'll just mark that to just fix that shading, can't look at bad shading. But the other one is smart apply. So we'll start this scene over and I'll just press SX2 to scale this out and we have this shape here and the first mistake I want to show you is that by going in edit mode we're going to control click mark which is going to bevel this in a terrible way and that's because the scale isn't applied and for the edit mode bevel we should probably deal with that but this is something you should solve on the user level where you go into object mode and you apply the scale and now we can go into edit mode and bevel it again and we see that the bevel is actually going through in fact, we can take it from here and just mirror it to the other side. In, in the event that you're using mirror and you want to use basically the default settings, we see at the bottom that there's a hot key to press X to reset. And when you press it, some notification text will pop up letting you know that it's been reset to default. So I will shift click the first side and then I will just regular click the X that I want to keep and that will just mirror it across to the other side. And the next thing of course is just sharpening the shape. If I wanted to begin adjusting a bevel, I could just press Q and adjust that particular bevel. But let's say I wanted to do an inset in the middle of this face. I could go in edit mode destructively and grab this mesh and do so. But this is where Smart Apply comes in. So if we press Q and we go under operations, there's an option for Smart Apply. And Smart Apply will normally just apply your modifiers except for the ones that you don't want applied. In this case, the last bevel or weighted normal. But shift clicking will actually duplicate this mesh while applying and, do, and deleting the modifiers that you normally would keep. And so now we're actually on a duplicated version of this mesh based on a notification text of the clone smart apply. And we'll just inset this face inwards, press control I and just X delete the faces off of this duplicate sacrifice. And now we can go under solidify, just press two to push it in as much as we're pushing out and then select both of them and do a difference operation. So now that we've done that, we've began working this shape, but if we were to shift click on mod scroll and scroll through our process, we're still working non-destructively. We just created a duplicate to use just kind of as a temporary placeholder. And so this is actually a fun way that I like to work when I'm doing these uh, daily tests. So I'll roll the uh, bull scroll backwards to just grab this particular Boolean and we'll look at it from the side and you know, old habits die hard. I try to do a video without box cutter. I can't not use box cutter. So we'll go ahead and just cut into this and you know, so far so good. The shading is breaking down a little bit. So the quickest way to fix that is to shift click on sharpen, which will trigger the auto smooth adjustment modal. And you can actually roll the wheel until the shading is just right. In fact, if you roll it too far, you can see down here where I'm actually catching more than I probably want in this particular smooth iteration. So probably around 35 will be optimal. The next thing I'll do is I'll shift A, add a plane, 
and we'll rotate this plane 90, scale it up, press Q, put a level of solidify on it, push it out both ways, and just do a difference. However, I still want to modify that plane, so I'll press Q, roll that back, and we'll bring back this plane, and all I wanted to do was actually bring it down a little bit on this top edge, but then extrude it, and then I will be able to just visual geometry to mesh to just apply that, and then scale this out to create a nice little nice little flap here. We don't wanna to go too far. We'll have to deal with auto smooth again. So the next thing is maybe I want to do a big inset on the perimeter of this piece because it is such a nice little open area that's been set up. In fact, we'll use box cutter to make it a little bit more interesting. So we can go in and use smart apply again, just shift click smart apply, and we can just select this and begin, you know, manipulating this shape We'll inset it so we don't hotline. Hotlining is where you accidentally bull an edge that already exists, which will cause a problem. We'll press Control I and delete this mesh for, it's just a duplicate. And this leaves us with just the mesh that we need of our quote unquote extraction. So we will go under solidify and just give it a little bit of thickness, select both pieces and just set up a difference. And things almost worked out for us. We'll go in and adjust the solidify and just see if maybe we just got too far. Maybe there's something in that we're hotlining against that's just ever so close. That's just catching us. Sometimes it's just a vert push away to fix such things. It could be that if we push too far, we call some humongous overlapping inside of here, which could actually be the problematic area that we don't want to trigger. But you can see that this shape is still non-destructive. I'm able to shift click, scroll through the modifiers and show you basically how I was able to create this shape. And this is a uh, very common workflow for me. Another thing I like to do is we'll go under operators and shift click on a smart apply again. And this time we will grab this edge and I'm just control clicking to grab everything in between. And we can just use a simple curve. Actually, I always do that. I mean to click curve extract and we'll just do a curve extract and then adjust the curve, press S to make that a better looking curve. From the previous Blender videos, I was discussing that you can actually fill it a curve in Blender using edit mesh tools. So I actually do not have it enabled, but it's one of your add-ons that's basically built into Blender. So I believe it's uh, we'll type in curve and look up curve tools and enable that. And I'm a big fan of curve tools. And we'll just fill it that curve and bring up the F9 and adjust how much we want to fill it that. And we can actually do the same thing on the other side with shift R. And we basically created some little rails here. So I just wanted to um, you know cover cover most aspects of the workflow. The other thing is that in the event that you are really wanting to Let's see, I can't let this thing stick out. So we'll just do it the worst way. We'll scale it in and then we'll go in edit mode, grab all of this and just bring it out. And that visually looks better. Of course, we'll select this shape and this one and press Alt X to mirror to the other side. And we're already getting somewhere very fast. The reason I actually put this gap in the middle was because I wanted to show uh, one of the lesser known talked about features of box cutter. And that is recut. Recut is the ability to cut back what you've taken away. In fact, you press X to switch over to slice. And this is what we're getting with a slice. This is what you're getting with a recut, which is activated with, I believe, Alt X. Let's look at our handy dandy hotkey list down here. Alt X is definitely disable recut but I think we may have a duplicate on our hands. So let's make sure that that is deleted and we accidentally deleted the wrong mesh. Sometimes that happens when you're messing with smart apply. So that's a little bit of a gotcha that you should definitely be aware of. In fact, let's try that same maneuver one more time. In the event of most failures, there's always a reason why. And I'm always curious as to why it failed. Failure will inevitably happen, but knowing how to get past it is how we truly progress as artists and modelers. So with this recut now, we have given this, this middle piece back new life, and we can just go in here, begin cutting, going to town. In fact, 
I might even get a little line box in here, draw a box, press W, turn it to a wedge, just put a few wedges in here. But that, in a nutshell, is what Smart Apply is all about. There's a lot more to Smart Apply. In fact, I didn't even cover its actual usage. I basically talked about its shift click usage to me. But the basic usage of Smart Apply is let's say I wanted to just apply these mods and just be done. Well, I can go under Operations, Smart Apply, and it should actually Smart Apply all the modifiers that are needing to be applied. In fact, we see here at the end that it actually did not work. And I'm curious now as to why. So the first bevel is a vertex group bevel. In fact, I'm pretty sure if we put a secondary bevel on top, then Smart Apply actually will do its job. Really, if you're using just one level of bevel like I was using at the beginning, you're probably just better off selecting it and just pressing Control A and converting the visual geometry to mesh. So now that we actually have a secondary bevel on top of it, you know, trimming this thing, we can actually go under Q, Operations, and Smart Apply and now it should actually apply all the modifiers aside from the ones that we didn't want applied. And we see that that still did not happen and was problematic. And this could actually be due to the experimental bull option of having Smart Apply remove the cutters. Sometimes removing the cutters isn't the best idea, but we'll go in and try it again. And now we see that Smart Apply has actually applied it the way it's supposed to. So sometimes removing cutters will actually work to your detriment. In fact, we will undo again just to kind of confirm that fact because I do want to make sure that in this particular video that we go over the gotchas that can come up with these tools and avoid some of these support issues that people run into that come up from logical inconsistencies that happen to collide with each other based on varying requests that users have for differing versions of this tool that they wish to see. So now we have it back on and we go and click on Smart Apply we see that it uh, removed all the cutters, but yet it did not apply them correctly. And this is probably due to something with the order they'll need to be checked into. But just for the record, if you do run into this issue, you just want to make sure Smart Apply Remove Cutters is off so that in the event that you do want to Smart Apply, you're actually able to Smart Apply and get the result that you want, which is basically every modifier applied except for the final bevel. This bevel would add in a horn amount of geometry, so we recommend that you definitely you know, take a self-reflection and ensure that you definitely want to apply this because most of the time that you apply it, it's definitely going to destroy your UVs and cause unwanted mesh results. So for that reason, we take great care to never apply the last bevel, which is why in order to do so, it does take very special um, overrides. But if you were to want to just apply it flat out, you could always just press Control A and use Visual Geometry to mesh. So hopefully this is given a little more insight to smart apply at this point in time and also where we aim to go with it um, the new remove cutters is definitely something a little more experimental but i definitely aim to make it even smarter as time goes on to be the absolute best apply in fact right now i'm working on ideas for making an apply that's actually modal where you basically will roll through the apply process like nobody's business but with that we'll wrap up this video and i'll see you guys next time